Good Thursday morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good week so far. Our topic from today.refrainmedia.com this morning is Brothers Again, and we're going to be reading Genesis chapter 33, verses 1 through 17 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. So let's go. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming and 400 men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two female servants, and he put the servants in with their children in front, then Leah with her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children, he said, Who are these with you? Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the servants drew near, they and their children, and bowed down. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down. And last Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company that I met? Jacob answered, To find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please. If I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand. For I have seen your face which is like seeing the face of God, and you have accepted me. Please accept my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. Thus he urged him, and he took it. Then Esau said, Let us journey on our way, and I will go ahead of you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are frail, and that the nursing flocks and herds are a care to me. If they are driven hard for one day, all the flocks will die. Let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I will lead on slowly at the pace of the livestock that are ahead of me, and at the pace of the children, until I come to my Lord in Seir. So Esau said, Let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. But Jacob journeyed to Sokoth and built himself a house, and made booths for his livestock. Therefore, the name of this place is called Succoth. So 20 years had passed since Jacob and Esau had seen each other. Back then, Esau had threatened to kill his brother, and Jacob had fled for his life. So we can understand that the idea of meeting again made Jacob nervous, especially since Esau came with 400 men. But Jacob is afraid and still trying to control the situation. We can see that something has changed in him, he is more humble, and he realizes that his gift cannot ultimately win Esau's favor. Quite possibly, Jacob's struggle with Laban have helped him to realize that the great wrong he had done to his brother long ago. He now acknowledges that all that he has comes only from God, by grace, and he recognizes that he needs grace from Esau if they are to reconcile. Many of us have strained relationships with family members, friends, or others we have wronged. Perhaps we recognize the need for reconciliation but aren't sure how to go about it. But relationships are always by grace. We cannot control how others respond to us. We can only show grace and enjoy the grace that is shown to us. In a similar way, our sin has ruined our relationship with God. And no amount of scheming on our part can restore us. But in Christ... We find the unexpected and merciful embrace of God, and for this we can only give thanks and enjoy God's grace shown to us. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for receiving and restoring your wayward children, for embracing me. For Jesus' sake, amen. So we've come full circle now. It's been 20 years. Doesn't look like Esau wants to kill Jacob anymore. But Jacob's still worried. He's threw all those gifts at Esau, insisted that he take them, but he is relenting to God's will. He is slowly starting to put things in God's hands, as we saw there and as we read in the devotion. So what's your Esau? Who is your Esau? And it could be a what or a who today. You know, what are you fearful of confronting? That's your Esau. Could it be a person that you've wronged in the past? Uh, could it be something that you don't want to revisit? Whether it be a 
thing or a place or whatever. We all have an Esau. And we all have a Jacob too. That's an important part to remember. We're all Esau and we're all Jacob. And what does that mean? That means we've wronged people and people have wronged us. I would hazard a guess there are very few people out there that can honestly say they have never wronged anybody and there's very few people out there if any that can say nobody's ever wronged them and I would bet much money that nobody can say that they've never wronged anybody nor have they ever been wronged so what are we gonna do about it well at this point we need to act like Esau when we're first wronged Yes, we overreact. You know, some may say Esau didn't overreact. He said he was going to kill his brother. And that was an acceptable thing to do for that crime at that time in history. But now, 20 years later, Esau is embracing his brother, welcoming him home. And offering, him, offering to help him get home. So we don't know how long it took Esau to get to that point. He could have been that way, you know, in a year. He could have been that way, you know. Could have taken him 20, that whole 20 years to get to that point. It certainly took Jacob the whole 20 years to get to that point. But it doesn't really matter how long. The fact is, Esau got there. He got to where he can forgive and, and, and continue to love his brother. Jacob is still a work in progress. He's still, he still needs to give it to God. He still needs to quit control, trying to control things. So that's what we need to do. We need to quit. At this point, we need to quit being Jacob. We need to be more like Esau. From 20 years ago, we needed to be like neither. One was a, a, a conniving schemer. And the other one threatened to kill his brother. So neither one of them are great examples. So how do we become a, an Esau or a uh, Jacob today? Well, for those who have wronged you, it's not a bad thing for you to reach out to them and let them know that you forgive them. Well, I know people are out there saying, well, Michael, what if I don't forgive them? Well, why not? The Bible teaches us to forgive. If our brother wrongs us, we forgive. If our, if our brother strikes us, we just turn the other cheek. So he can strike that as well. That's what Jesus is teach. So, why aren't you forgiving? If you are Jacob, go to those who you have wronged and ask their forgiveness or beg their forgiveness even is it humiliating to beg for forgiveness in some people's mind yeah but it's also humiliating for in some people's minds to give forgiveness but we're not talking about human emotions here we're talking about doing what God wants us to do so let's put the human emotion thing aside let's put pride aside pride gets people in more trouble than anything pride is the um, gunpowder to the sin bullets i guess is the best way to put it so set your pride aside forgive forgive those who have wronged you forgive ask for forgiveness for those who you have wronged so that's your task go out and do today hopefully um thank you guys as always for watching prayer requests praise reports please leave them in the comments below or shoot us an email or give us a phone call or send us a text our contact information is in the description of every one of these devotional videos yeah thank you guys so much for watching we love you and we will see you tomorrow morning have a great day bye